Hello everybody, welcome to the second course. This is second course drone fly planning 101, a practical guide. It's going to be one document, it's going to be an Excel sheet, but it's going to have multiple sheets through the Excel process. So it's going to have uh, sheet one through to sheet 10. We will look at the sheets later on. I do have a second video, which I actually recorded a while back, but I wanted to redo this initial um, introduction video. So I'm doing that now just because a few things have come up. This course is designed that it is a practical step-by-step -step process on how to do your flight planning, how to use what you learned in the first course. I will be using a real life example that's coming up for me. I've got an opportunity to join in on uh, basically a DFE, an examiner has asked me to be their, their mock student or their makeshift student for the CAA to observe him, do his DFE on me so that he can renew his DFE rating. So it's a little bit of a hectic thing. I have to plan according to the CAA standards, the DFE standards and my own standards. And I just thought this was the perfect opportunity to actually complete this course or complete these documents and record the videos. In the meantime, you know, the editing might take a little while and that's okay. The planned date for this uh, this DFE, this makeshift DFE is the 22nd of March. It's now the 11th of March, so I've got a, I don't have too much time to get through it, but I will get through it as much as possible. And then we will move on to the editing and then you guys will have the course out for yourselves. Something I want to bring up is that I'm going to be planning this. I'm going to be filling my documents in according to two types of aircraft, not just one. Because my mission of the day is not going to be just to complete one DFE. It's going to be to complete two. It's going to be one on a fixed wing aircraft and it's going to be one on a multi-rotor aircraft. So as I go through my things, I'm going to have to plan according to two separate aircrafts. And I thought that's just a little bonus for you all so you guys can see how I would go about these things according to different types of aircrafts and different types of RPAs. Finally, in that introduction video that I recorded a while back, you will have seen that my Excel sheet was had the FOM checklist in the front and everything else was behind it. I've moved that to the end so that we can go through all those first checklists first and use that to help us make our most accurate quick reference guide at the end. The last thing I'm going to be doing with this course is a little bit different to the first course. I'm not going to make section one be one whole video. I'm going to br break them up into subsections. So section 1A, 1B, 1C. All that means is that section 1A will be the first part of the first um, checklist. Se section 1B will be the second part of the checklist, so on and so forth. And we will structure our course like that. It's going to save your time. It's going to save my time. Well, it won't save your time per se, but it's going to help you follow along better. Instead of having these big half an hour videos, we're going to have like, you know, seven to 10 minute videos. And I think that's going to be a lot easier to chew down as you're going through the course. Just a heads up for anyone who is new, who hasn't come from the first course. Let me just do a little bit of an introduction. My name is Josh. I'm an RPL instructor. RPL stands for a remotely piloted license, which basically means I'm a drone pilot, okay? But I'm more than that, I'm a drone instructor. I've been an instructor for three years. Um, I've been in the industry for over three years. I started in 2019. I've kept my knowledge up to date. I've learned all the time as I've gone through and um, I've even released a first course, which if you wanna go check out, please do go check it out. The recommended process would be to do the first course first because that's going to tell you the information that you're going to need to understand to follow along in this course, okay? So this course isn't going to have all the explanations like the first course had. This course is going to be a practical step-by-step -step process using information from the first course. These documents that I'm giving away are full-scale, heavy-duty documents that I've never seen any company, I've never seen any school use these documents in the detail that I've gone into. And it forms, it all forms part of an FOM, which is a field operations manual. We're basically gonna be filling in a, a, a homemade field operations manual. And once this is done, once we've gone through this course, you guys are gonna get two of these. You're gonna get an empty one for you guys to use for yourself, for your own planning later on, all your other planning of your, your other flights. And you're also going to get a completed one. That's gonna be the one that I'm going to do through this course that you can then refer to 
if you need assistance in the future on figuring out how to do your own FOM. Maybe you forget a part of, of the videos or maybe you need just want that little extra explanation in reading the stuff, that's going to help you there. Having said all of that, I hope you guys enjoy the course. You know the whole deal. If there's a review that pops up early, I'd really appreciate a five stars. If you don't know what to make of the course yet, that's fine. Just keep going, see what's up, uh, and I hope you enjoy it.